Uh, and I really hope that the Democrats will recognize soon the damage that uh, Speaker Pelosi is doing to their party, that she's doing to uh, this institution, that she's doing to the, to the House of Representatives and to the United States uh, by absolutely refusing to negotiate, uh, by doing something nobody's ever done before, canceling uh, the State of the Union appearance of the President. Uh, and I, I think it's time uh, for the Democratic Party to have an intervention with the Speaker and ask her to do what's right for the nation, what's right for their party, what's right for this institution. So uh, we hope they will come to the table, uh, but we have not seen uh, any indication that they're even willing to be reasonable at this point. And uh, as I said, that's bad for the nation above all. As the shutdown continues, we've been committed to trying to make sure that all of our federal workers get paid. Uh, we brought another bill to the floor today that would have paid all federal workers. Last week, a similar bill only got six Democrats. Every Republican voted to pay the workers who have been either working or furloughed during the shutdown. Uh, we got six Democrats to vote with us last week. Today, we got 13 Democrats to vote with us. And so you're starting to see a growing number of Democrats break from their party leaders and recognize we've got to solve this problem. All we need is eight more Democrats to vote with us to pay all federal workers and everybody can get paid, even as we negotiate our differences on border security. But if anybody watched the colloquy today, first you heard the majority leader not put one counteroffer on the table. You also heard the majority leader say that they are not going to talk during this impasse. How do you solve an impasse when the President of the United States continues to put offers on the table to solve this problem, to reopen government and secure our border, and the Democrats' response is that they're not going to talk. That's unacceptable. It's unacceptable that the Speaker of the House wants to hold the State of the Union hostage because she doesn't want the American people to hear the message that the President has about the need for border security. You know, they talk about border security, but talk is cheap until you're actually willing to put the money in place that our experts who are risking their lives say is needed. And that a number is $5.7 billion. If they're not willing to support that request from our experts, what number are they willing to support to keep this country safe? So far, they've yet to put a single offer on the table, and now their response is that they're not going to talk. That's unacceptable. It's not the way to solve this problem. It's time for them to actually sit down and talk with the President and solve this crisis. You know, this is a place where a lot of talk happens, but action speaks louder than words. For the Democrats to end this week early, to have members go home when federal workers are going to go to a second paycheck that they do not receive. On the floor this week, the Republicans proposed paying all the federal employees. Only 13 Democrats would join with us. The President has proposed something that's very reasonable for border security, but also dealing with DACA. Is DACA important? I believe it is. The Speaker of the House last year, Nancy Pelosi, she holds the record for the longest speech ever given on this House floor. It was over DACA when she was shutting the government down for it. The idea that you could take both challenges that are out there, find an opportunity to solve it, and put the American public first, but what is the answer the Democrats gave? First, no to paying the federal employees, and second, to close early and go home. I'm staying this weekend. I'm requesting that the leaders get together tomorrow, all of us. Stay in the room till we solve this problem. The President is right. It only takes 45 minutes. The President is right that he found two issues out there that both parties care a deep part about. He is correct that our government is designed to find common ground, that not one person could always have their way. Unfortunately, I think the Speaker thinks differently. It was a low point, I think, in history for the Speaker of the House to uninvite the President of the United States. It's a low point that we are still shut down. It's even lower that you would end Congress and have people go home and not solve this problem. I listened to the majority leader today. He did not list one bill outside of suspensions that they will bring up next week. How can that be a majority party? How can the majority party refuse to communicate 
refuse to even willingly to sit in a room. So I'm requesting that we all leadership get in the room tomorrow and make a commitment to one another that we stay in that room until we solve the problem. Because I believe we can solve it rather quickly. But I will work with anyone that wants to put America first, that wants to solve this problem, wants to make sure that we open up this government, pay our federal workers, and secure this border. And yes, I will vote for reform when it comes to DACA. I find that one person can't have all what they want, that it's a concern on all sides, and I'm willing to make that work. Take any questions you might have. Yes. Uh, didn't House Republicans last session have a lot of opportunities to prioritize this? Instead, you went after health care, tax reform yourself in September 2017, uh, said, look, there's Harvey, there's debt ceiling, there's CR. We'll worry about the wall at some other point. How do you respond to people who said you had two years to work alongside this president to make this happen, and repeatedly you chose not to in favor of other things, and only now you're putting up this fight? All right. First of all, I disagree with the premise of your question. Because, no, we did put up the fight. If you look in the House of what we moved to pass for the wall and border security. But unfortunately, in this House, the rules of the Senate are different. It takes 60 votes. So it wasn't I denying the American public border security. It was the Democrats over on the Senate side. Every time we got to that brink that they said no. So, no, it's the same action they're taking today. When, when Leader Schumer decided to shut the government down after we had passed a bill to move to the House, that's the challenge. But when you look today, jobless claims, a 49-year low. How did that happen? Because we, we led on the economics. We made sure a tax bill went through. But not one Democrat would vote for that. They said it would be Armageddon. It's Armageddon because we're at a 49-year low in jobless claims. I'll tell you the problem we're having right now is 800,000 federal workers are not being paid, and the Democrats are telling the House to go home. That's a problem. So to what degree do you think the country is less safe now when it comes to air travel or other kinds of uh, services that are not being provided? Should the American people be uneasy about getting on an airplane, going to an airport, or any of those other kinds of services as a result of this shutdown? I leave it to the experts to say that, but what my travel through has been very safe. I haven't had a delay in others, and I've seen that throughout, and I know we have professionals working. But that's the challenge right now. Why would you send people home where we're asking people to sit there and work, and right now they're not being paid, why would the Democrats not vote to pay those individuals who are working? Because we had that on the floor. I'll give credit to 13 of the Democrats who said yes, that they would break from their leader and actually vote to pay those individuals. But why would that same leadership that voted no to paying them, why would they tell us to go home? Why wouldn't they sit here and solve the problem? And that's what I'm requesting. Mr. Mr. Since you feel, seem to feel it's time to end this standoff now, what's your formula for resolving the initial threshold problem, which is Democrats saying, um, we're not going to negotiate till you reopen the government, and the, the White House saying, that is irrational. And the White House saying, you're not going to get any wall money. I mean, I want the wall money, wall money before I open the government. How do you resolve Look, that? I've been through every single one of these meetings. I watched the president turn to Speaker Pelosi, and I watched him say, I'll open up the government in 30 days. Could we deal some on the border security? She said, no, not one dollar. That, that's irrational. Think for one moment, just a short time ago, that they voted for some border security. They voted for wall. But now they want to say no in the process? That, to me, is wrong from every shape and form. It's wrong that they're sending people home. We should be here solving this problem. Mr. Mr. Do you have any concerns about uh, the president going after Michael Cohen's uh, family, his father-in-law, and Cohen saying that know, because of his threats, these threats, he has had to cancel his, his testimony because of a fear of his family's safety. Does that concern okay. you at all? First, again, I disagree with your premise, because you are saying that Cohen is saying this, who is recently, will be going to jail recently, for lying to Congress. I don't know of any time the president threatened this individual. I know Cohen to be a liar and why he's going to jail, so I don't agree with any of your premise. I haven't seen the president do anything about that. He raised concerns about his father in law and Giuliani I, I, tied I in. See, uh, yeah. I'm, yes. On the shutdown, um, if Democrats offer $5.7 billion for border security, but it does not include money for the wall, is that a non starter for you all? I don't believe anybody in America thinks you can have border security without some form of a barrier. And what's interesting is, that's coming from Speaker Pelosi, right? But why don't we listen to some of her members? Why don't we listen to one of her chairs? Uh, the agriculture secretary, our agriculture chairman, Colin Peterson. 
He says, give Trump the money. Or why don't we listen to the armed service chairman? He says walls actually work. I haven't listened to the number two. The majority leader just say yesterday that walls are not immoral, that they actually work. We, we find the facts from San Diego to Yuma to El Paso that walls actually work. And I think most of all of Americans understand you have to have some barrier to actually have border security. That's what the Democrats used to believe, but all of a sudden now they say no. And why by they're saying no is harming 800,000 Americans. And again, if they truly believe that, then stay here and solve the problem. Get in the room. Let's see those actions overtake the actions you're doing now. Mr. Leader, Secretary Ross was on television today, said he didn't understand how, why federal workers were having to go to food banks. Does the administration not understand the, the impact this is having on federal workers? And what's your reaction to that comment? I did not see that, but this is having a real impact on federal workers. Many of these individuals do not make a great deal amount of money. They live paycheck to paycheck. That is why I'm sitting here right now today saying I'm staying here. And I want every other leader to be in the room, and I want us to pledge that we solve it. We do not come out this weekend until we solve this problem. Because you know what? They are, they are being harmed. And at the same time that they're being harmed in this process, they're continuing to work. And that's why on this floor, what did the Republicans do? They said pay them. And we put it on the floor to vote on it. All it took was a few more Democrats, they would be getting paid. But they chose not to pay them and not to, not to even stay and solve the problem. All right, no more. <laughs> oh, you're too late. In answering her quest the question about the $5.7 billion offer Democrats are putting together, why did you use the word barrier instead of wall? Well, I think from a standpoint, a barrier is a wall in the process. Um, I watched, having been from California, going to El Paso, being along the border, and I wish, I don't know if all of you have gone along the border. I think if you went to the border, spent a little time with those individuals who serve us along that way, You'd walk away and you'd know that there's common ground. You'd walk away and say, I need a wall, I need a barrier, something to protect as we go forward. And why do I watch this president do in these meetings? I've watched him give four different offers. I never heard one from the speaker. I never heard one from the speaker. I heard the speaker say, even though government was shut down, we were sworn in. We went forward with that. I heard the speaker say in that speech that she wants that, that body inside there to be a town hall where people can see and watch but be the first speaker in the history of America to disinvite a president. Even though that same day she used those words, she invited the president to come. Woodrow Wilson was the first president who came in 1913 and gave a State of the Union before Congress. 83 other times we've done that. Since 1934, there's never been a State of the Union past February 2nd. But this speaker has a new history. One, first to disinvite. Two, she closes the House down during a shutdown. She refuses to talk in the process, and she votes against allowing payment for these federal workers. To me, that's all wrong. So let's change course. Let's get back in the room tomorrow. I don't know, if, I don't think she has a Codale or any other plans. So why don't we solve it, and why don't we make the commitment to one another that we will not leave the room until we solve this problem? Because I know we can find common ground. Thank you. Thank you.